Listen, we have my guy Tyler Harvey in the studio. If you haven't heard Tyler's story, you have to stick around. Probably the most unique basketball story you'll ever hear. He was once a walk-on. He paid to play basketball. He became the nation's leading scorer, NCAA leading scorer, and ended up getting drafted into the NBA. Uh, We go in detail on what he did uh, to get from point A to point B. We talked about training. We talked about uh, where he's at in a mental space and how meditation uh, helped transform his game. Uh, My man scored 58 points in the G League this year. Uh, So we talk about getting into the flow, and we really dig into the nuts and bolts of what you should be doing as a player to get to the next level. Let's get it. You're listening to the PJF Podcast, a show dedicated to decoding elite sports performance and fitness. I'm Paul Fabritz, and I'm an MBA strength and conditioning and performance trainer. If you want to become superhuman, take your fitness and take your sports performance to the next level, this is the podcast for you. Let's do it. All right, so we're here with Tyler Harvey. So for anybody who doesn't know Tyler Harvey's story, it's probably one of the best basketball stories that you'll ever hear. So my man is uh, walk-on in college at where? Western? Eastern Washington. Eastern Washington. Go Eagles, baby. Go Eagles. Big sky. Big sky. So uh, walk-on, right? He somehow gets playing time because of injuries, and my man just snaps takes over, ends up being the nation's leading scorer, NCAA leading scorer, and then he gets drafted into the NBA. So I don't know if you understand just how rare that is to go from walk-on to drafted at the NBA level, but it's pretty incredible, and we're going to get into that story. Thanks for being here, Tyler. Appreciate it. So take us kind of back to, all right, you're getting into college. Are you just under the radar? Like, are you nice and people are just like not finding you or were you legit like walk on level? I mean, I never played AAU ball growing up. So, you know, a lot of spotlight was on AAU and I didn't have that kind of pull and uh, coaches really didn't, you know, if you didn't play AAU, how are they going to find you? I mean, I went to a good high school, Bishop Montgomery, Mm -hmm. didn't play varsity till my junior year, which is also, you know, rare if you want to be a D1 athlete. But the funny thing is I grew 10 inches in high school. So that's nice. Um, what years were that? I grew from my fr- I came in freshman year five four, oh. about one hundred twenty pounds. So that's crazy. Um, and then by my senior year, I was about six one, and then um, yeah. So I was gonna go. The story is, my dad he's a NBA I mean NBA college ref mm-hmm. for Division one. Um, he knew my coach at the time was Jim Hayford. He was coaching D three. So I was gonna go Division three. Um, you know my goal was D one, but it was a chance to play basketball. So right. I was going to go there, um, you know, God willing, he got the job at Eastern Washington that summer. And he said, if I wanted a chance, I could walk on. He wasn't just going to mm-hmm. drop me. So I was thankful for that opportunity. So I was like, sure, I'll walk on and see what can happen, man. Eastern Washington all the way in Cheney. I never heard of it, but it was a chance to play basketball at a Division One level. So I took that opportunity right. and see where it went. So you get there freshman and sophomore year. What happens? Do you play at all? Freshman year, I redshirted. So okay. they told me I was going to redshirt that year. Uh, probably played defense that whole year. Didn't touch the ball in offense in practice. <laughs> I mean, you know how it goes for a red shirt. Yeah. Um, so for all my people red shirting out there, I feel for you. Right. Um, so I didn't touch the ball uh, offensively, but I did lock myself in the gym every night and worked on my game offensively because I knew my time would hopefully come one day and I'll be able to show that. So I right. did redshirt one year. Sophomore year, what happens? So the year off my redshirt year, I didn't play the whole year. We had 10 games left in the season. Um, we were playing at Northern Arizona. <laughs> it's my it's my squad right here. Yes, I love that school. So first of all, I was injured around this time. It, I always tell him if I wasn't injured, I would have been in the game locking him up, and he would have never snapped, and we wouldn't be here right now. I don't even think we had my man on the scout, but we'll say that. <laughs> um, so man, yeah. So we were playing at NAU. Ten games left in the year. We were down like twenty three with like eight minutes to go. So the coach threw me in. Somehow, some way, like I dropped into this crazy zone, brought us back from 23 down in the second half, um, tied it up, went to overtime. So I hit like five threes wow. with eight minutes to go and tied the game up with like a minute left, went to overtime, ended up winning that game. That's crazy. Yeah. And so after that, is the coach like, this is undeniable? Like, we got to play this kid? 
Yeah, so I, as I remember, the next game, I really didn't play that much. And then we had like three guys go down mm. with like nine games left in the year. So, I mean, I was the last the last choice to go in as the point guard at the time. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think the last nine games averaged like 20 points. And, you know, just um, we won about, I think, six of those games. And so, I mean, the coach, hopefully it put a good impression in his mind for the next year, which it did. And, um, yeah, and we're like, talking about sophomore year this happened? Yeah, so this is my this is my first year off the red shirt. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you're still locking yourself in the gym, which first of all, I, I don't think people understand like where you're at mentally as a walk on. It's like, well, you know, sh- should I grind and get this playing time or should I just enjoy college and just be on the team and 100%. is this a social thing? For you, it's like there's something bigger beyond this. It's like I'm not just trying to earn playing time. I'm trying to I know how far I can go. And so I know you've always told me just how you locked yourself in the gym uh, during this time and, and how many shots a day were you getting up? Honestly, a ton. I remember just like I'd shoot on the gun a lot. That was like my best friend. After every practice, after all the games, I'd just stay after and shoot on the gun. You're, I mean, probably about 800 shots. I try to count the makes, so I try to go like 500 makes a day. Right. Okay, so 500 makes a day, and this is every day. This isn't like I do this on Tuesday. Like no, this is every single this day. This was my life. Yeah, so that that's a difference maker right there. So then you go into your junior year, and what happens? Junior year, I got put on scholarship, so I was the mm. walk on for those two years. Um, so my coach gave me a scholarship for that la- for that third year. Is that a confidence boost, or is that kind of just like I know I should have been here already? For sure. I mean, you know, you can't control everything, like I said. So I knew if I wanted to get that scholarship, I'd have to earn it. I mean, right. nothing's given, even at the college level. I mean, Facts. I walked on. Um, so I wanted to earn that scholarship, so I did. And, um, I mean, I had a great year, man. It was a it was a solid year. I mean, you go through ups and downs as a, you know, as an athlete. It's hard to stay mentally stable. But, you know, if you know you put the work in, you know the results will come. Right. And then going into senior year, you became the NCAA's leading scorer, right? Yep. That's how many how many did you uh, average per game? 23. That's tough in college. Yeah. 23 points per game is tough in college. And and how are you doing this? Is it mainly threes? Is it twos? Is it a little bit of everything? So my coach, we ran kind of like the Golden State offense a little bit now. A lot of ball screens, a lot of threes. Uh, we led the nation in three-point attempts. So, I mean, we're, we're getting them up. Yeah. Um, so it gave me the opportunity to play my game. I, I primarily shot a lot of three pointers and it was able to suit my game and, you know, it worked out. You led right. the nation in, in three point makes that year, right? Yeah. yeah. And, it, and, it, and attempts. <laughs> and attempts. <laughs> and attempts. <laughs> That's crazy, man. So, okay. You, you're, fr- you're a walk on and you become the nation's leading scorer. Like already that is so rare for most people. It's like, Hey, I won. Right. You know what I mean? Like let's, let's, let's now see what else I could do. Maybe I, you know, get into something else. Or uh, I don't think a lot of people would see that and say, well, now I'm going to go to the NBA. Right. Right. Because it's like, I'm a walk on. And so, so many people are still hitching onto their past and it's in, in your pigeonhole. And it's like, well, I'm a walk on. And then I got lucky and I got to this level. But for you, it's like, I feel like I'm one of the best players in the nation. I feel like I can get drafted. Where's your confidence at, at that point? Honestly, man, like I feel like you have to have that inner belief that you're the best player on the court at all times. Right. Um, I mean, even if you're not, I knew I put the work in, so I knew I, that gave me the confidence to show out, go out there and show what I can do. Um, so, I mean, my goal was the NBA um, as a kid. I mean, it's it's hard to imagine being a walk on going into the NBA, but I knew it wouldn't be easy for me to do that. And I knew I had to put the work in to do so. So, I mean, I, I was doing whatever I could. First of all, that. is that are you the first person to ever do that i've never heard of a walk-on to the nba i honestly don't know that's that's that's, that'd be an interesting stat to look up um calvin go and look that up i i (laughs) really don't know like i'd never heard of that before i'm curious too you talk about your just your 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 self-belief with which we definitely understand but where you know was there was there were you separating yourself from your own belief when you got to eastern washington like okay i got here i see these guys i can play at this level okay and then when you got the opportunity you're like okay i can really play at this level like where was there was there a differentiation between your inner belief and like the actual product that you were putting out there honestly that one game at nau and i went off for the whatever um that gave me the confidence to show that like okay i could do this even as a skinny guy i mean i wasn't the biggest guy or the most athletic guy in the room i mean you look at me and you're like oh this guy hoops like he's 150 pounds he's 6'2 scrawny guy but you know that gave me the confidence to go out there and believe in myself and do it yeah so when did you go when did it when did it be the nba become like a reality for you Honestly, man, funny story. I didn't even know I was leading the nation in scoring. 
Um, I, I've told this story plenty of times. Like my coach came up to me after practice one day. It was like, you know, you're leading the, the nation in scoring. Like I was so locked in to like doing what I had to do to win those games that I, I didn't even know that was that happened. That's crazy. Yeah. Yes. So many people are so hyper focused on their individual stats. Yes. Like me at that age, if you ask me my stats, I'm like, bro, fifteen point eight three five seven repeating. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. I know exactly yeah. what my stats are. You shouldn't really care about that at that level. Like sometimes when you put your focus in the right areas, like psh, what can I do to help my team win? Yeah, that's that's amazing. Everything right comes there. as you a byproduct. I mean? Yeah, exactly. That's amazing that that you didn't know that you were leading the nation. In I didn't, bro. Our main thing from the beginning was March Madness. Yeah, I mean, so that was my main goal. And did you guys make it to the tournament? Yep, we did. Okay. We beat Montana at Montana that year to go to March Madness. Yeah, Who did tournament. you guys play in the first Georgetown. round? Uh, yeah, we lost by, I think, 12. Okay, so now you're moving into pre-draft. Are you being told that you could legit be drafted, or wh where are you kind of at at that stage? Yeah, so there was a good possibility of me being drafted. I think now you can test the waters now and, like, yeah. come back, or I don't know. At the time... I don't think we we had because you were a redshirt junior. You were eligible yeah, to so go back. Yeah, I could have went year. back. I could have yeah. transferred to another to another school too if I wanted mm -hmm. to, but uh, I was all in, man. Um, I remember I talked to my agent, and you know, there was a good possibility you get drafted. But then again, it's NBA, it's a business. I mean, you can hear one thing, but at the end of the day, you can also get blindsided. And you don't know, right? Um, yeah. And so you end up getting drafted by the Orlando Magic. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. What does that day feel like? Were you at home uh, watching or? Yeah, so we had a draft party at, at my dad's house in Long Beach. And uh, still, I, I have no clue, like, if you're getting drafted or not. I mean, you could have this big party and, you know, it'd still be a celebration. But at the end of the day, you could be, you know, not drafted. Right. Um, so I remember I got a call from my agent at the 49th pick. And he said, you know, you're going to the Orlando Magic. And the wow. funny thing is, I didn't have a workout with them. I had like 16 workouts with all these teams, but I didn't have one workout with the magic. So I was like, really? okay, like we're going to Orlando then. That's crazy. Yeah. I can, I, I always imagine the stress. Cause you see like those little house parties, like yeah. they're sitting there in the living room. Dude, like, what if I don't super. get drafted? <laughs> I had to go in the other room and I, I was like stressing. tripping. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Was I, that the best feeling of your life up to that point? I was ready. Like it was, it was, of course. I mean, it's amazing, man. It's a childhood dream. Like I look back on it now and I wish I would have appreciated it more. I mean, you know, when you're so caught up in like, okay, what's next? What's next? What's next? You don't enjoy like the time that, you know, that moment that I'm in right there. Yeah. Um, but I look back on that now and I'm like, dang, I should have really enjoyed it more. But of course, man, it was the ha one of the happiest days of my life. hundred yeah. percent. Right. That's insane. So di like dive a little bit deeper into the specifics of what changed your game in that time? Because I know part of it is you just putting your head down and you continue to work. You continue to believe in yourself. But are there any like specific things? Are there anything that you, is there something that you changed in your daily habits? Is there, you know, a drill that you did? Is there a shooting form that you change or is it just like peer reps? So for me, I had to really take care of my body better um, and eat better. Uh, I remember when I came to work out with you, you, you know, you'd fool me. You'd tell me now, but you wouldn't tell me at the time. You know, my body wasn't in the best shape that it needed to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think I did tell you then. I think I said you're fat. Okay. And then you, <laughs> I so. Felt, I filtered it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he told me that I was the Michelin man because I was puffy and white. <laughs> Yeah, ever since that, that day, ever since he told me that, I've locked in and now I got lean. So like you're in the back of my mind at all times. That's a good thing. So that's I need good. haters. That's, I need critics. That's it, man. We keep you going. Hey, I appreciate it. But but yeah, so he came in. He was a, he was little out of shape, and so I know one of the things that you told me is like, look, I've been locked in the lab for the last several years working on my shot, and my shot is where it needs to be. I want to keep getting that better, but I got to get faster. I got to jump higher if I want to hang at that level. Right, right. I mean, I found Paul on Instagram. Um, and it just so happened that he was local, um, and, and, uh, OC. So I reached out to him and, um, told him who I was, yada, yada, yada. And he told me I could come by and that summer, uh, really transformed my body and I was trying to eat right. And, um, that, that still, I take that to this day with me. I mean, trying to maintain my body at a certain level to play at a certain weight. Right. So funny story, you know, we talk about all these assessments. We talk about these advanced science assessments. If I get on the court with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, I learn more about them than any science assessment could ever <laughs> tell me. Now, this guy is going to lie to you guys right now about the one-on-one -on -one battles that we've had. Oh, but I will say this, beginning of that summer, you come in and I'm cooking you. 
See, that's okay. just not. Uh, <laughs> Again, just not he's going to lie, goes. but let me give you my story. I'm cooking you beginning of the summer. You get significantly faster. You're jumping higher. By the end of the summer, I no longer could hang with you. We finished one of the games towards the end of the summer. You drove by me. You got up and you threw it down. And I was like, wow, Tyler has made some significant improvements. <laughs> and then and then you hit me with my own shot, the extendo, which you've never hit before in your life. You hit me with your shoulder. You extend it out. You spun it off the glass. I don't know if it was luck or if it was skill, but you ended up winning. And I remember walking away from that summer being like, wow, like what an improvement physically. Because I, honestly, at the beginning of the summer, I felt like I could guard you. I mean, I felt confident. I'm glad. I, I mean, you're supposed to have that kind of confidence, right? I'm, I'm very confident in my ones. Yeah. yeah. So first of all, <laughs> first, first of all, you say that I haven't beat you, right? A hundred percent. So do you remember when we were playing ones and I won three games in a row? This is the first time we ever played. Are we talking group ones? Or are we talking yeah, just yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was two other people playing. Okay. See, I don't count those. Oh, oh see. Okay. Interesting. You know, Interesting. come on, man. One on one. We're going. And that's a one v one, baby. We don't. But it, but it's king of the court. Yeah, but if we're talking mano y mano, who's got the upper hand? But king of the court, you play against the same people I'm playing against. You have the same opportunity to score against them. But you put yourself in a certain position, so you don't. I don't have to guard you. Let me let me break this up with an irony approach because we were actually having this conversation earlier today because I was telling Paul the times that I beat him in that setting, and he said that didn't count because he said the same thing. Well, it was a reverse because he said that doesn't count because we're not mano y mano. And so now we're sitting there the same argument, but with the flip. I did. I did say that. I did say that. (laughs) You've never beat me mano y mano. I have beat you mano y mano. No. Okay, a thousand to one. So <laughs> I'll work with that. A thousand this to is, one. Me and Tyler, okay, we played king of the court. I won three games. I'm walking off the court. I'm like, this one was an easy one. I'm going to my weight room. I got to send emails, bro. I'm running a business here. <laughs> like, I'm sending emails at my desk, and he comes up and taps me on the shoulder. Bro, we got to go to seven. We got. You begged me. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Just to get you to shut up, like I went and we played again and you won to seven. I think I do remember that. Yes. I think you might be right. I I'm think I did, you. I did. Your plantar fasciitis kicked in. It did kick in. And I came <laughs> over there and asked you to play one more. That might be a Yeah, so at that time I had bad plantar fasciitis that stemmed from a bad ankle sprain. And so, yeah, I mean, I cooked the dude. I went, my plantar fasciitis tightened up and then I went back out and he beat me. Overall, that summer, though, I won probably 49% of games. I'm not going to lie, though. We had some pretty good battles. We had that some summer. good battles. I mean, it was like a three time a week thing with us. Yeah. We're like, we, as me, you, like Baz would play. I think Tyus would play yeah. sometimes. Like, we had a good little group, uh, and, and I was balling. Last summer, let's not talk about last summer. Yeah, last we, summer was we won't bad. Let that one, we'll let that Tyler one go. Tyler cooked all of us last summer. Yeah. And it, it was bad. I We played like five spots, and I think I scored like once. Yeah. Like, I've never. And then I shut down basketball yeah. for like a whole year after that. He was tough. just sending emails for the whole year. I, mean, I just sent emails. <laughs> I want to tell a quick story. I remember 2016 when you first got to the gym. And it was a unique summer because you were doing a Buddy Hield's pre-draft. And so Buddy Hield was coming off Naismith Player of the Year. Best shooter in the country, hands down. And then you walk in the gym and he recognized you right away and said, oh, oh really? you're the best shooter in the gym. And you were going back and forth. And obviously he, you were taking a humble approach and was like oh, yeah. you know, conceding to him. But you guys were having an argument over who was the better shooter, right. but giving the credit to each other. And I thought that was really unique because I, you know what I mean? You had to, you know, hit up Paul and explain who you were. And yeah. I was doing the homework. I'm like, who's Tyler Harvey? And I was yeah, like, no, like that. I'm not a big with, name, bro, at all. Yeah, but honestly, then it was impressive. I'm like, <laughs> but then you look you up and you're like, oh, he led the nation in scoring. Yeah. Three-point shooter. Unreal. Then you see, you see, you start putting reps up, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, we got two of the best shooters, arguably, you know, what I mean, in the world at the time, in the, in the gym, right. every day. That was that was unique right. summer. And that, the right? the cool yeah. thing was like when I started working with him, I was like, oh, that's why he's yeah. here. Like, oh, he's like he's attention to detail. Like anything you say, he's going to do, and he's going to do it better than you even expected. Exactly. And so you can you can start to to put the piece together of like, oh, that's why he was a walk on, and now he's yeah you know, drafted by the NBA. Um, yeah, so we kind of develop your speed. We kind of develop your vertical. You get lean, you get strong. Um, and then you ended up that year playing G League or did you go overseas that I year? I went overseas to Italy. You went overseas. Year. Okay. How was that game? How does that compare in Italy to the American game? So you hear a lot of guys talk about overseas and they think it's easy and, and I can go overseas and do this or that. I mean, overseas is a different ball game. Right. right. I mean, these guys, it's their life up there, too. I mean, we're over here grinding. They're over there grinding. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say the system up there is a lot slower. Um, games aren't going in the hundreds. Um, you're getting like, you know, 60, 70 points a game. Mm-hmm. Um, playing 20, 25 minutes a game. I mean, you're not get, it's, not a, it's not as long as the NBA game, 
Um, you know, three second rules, obsolete up there. I mean, you can bigs can sit in the key all game, so the paint's jammed That's up. That's terrible. Um, I can never play that. Yeah, I mean, they're super physical. I mean, it was it was a tough mental barrier to go over there, especially by yourself. Uh, my fiance came up for me with me uh, for about four months, so that was nice, man, because it, it's it's tough being up there nine months out of the year. I bet grinding. Yeah, uh, for That's, the mental. <laughs> a lot of the guys that we've trained that uh, go overseas, they're like. In the summer, I don't watch Netflix at all because I want to binge watch once I'm over there. Like I got nothing else to do, especially like if you're, I mean, in a in a spot where not everybody speaks the same language. Like that was tough. That's got to be tough. Tough. Just feeling that feeling isolated. Yes, I mean, you go to a store. I mean, you got to read. Everything is in Italian, and you go to restaurants. You don't speak the language. I mean, it's tough, man. It's it's a tough thing to do for sure. And so then this past year, you played in the G League. I did. And had one of your best years. Uh, my man scored 58 points in a game, which I can only imagine scoring 58 points in a game. Like that's just insane. Uh, you had a great overall year. Like take us into where you were kind of at this year. Like mentally, when you're scoring 58 points, like what what, what does that even feel like? So it's funny. So when I was overseas for two years, um, it really tested, like I said, my mental. So I really got into like meditating and trying to visualize. And I think that was the for me, I'm not the most athletic guy or the biggest guy, so I have to have an edge somewhere. So I right. think I wanted to develop my mental game to be, you know, just as strong as my physical game because I'm not mm-hmm. super physical. Mm-hmm. So I took those two years overseas. I look back at it now, and I, that was a time for me to develop that. Um, so this year, I honestly felt like no pressure this year. I felt like things that, things that were going to happen were already going to happen. Like, I can't control everything. I was just going to put my head down work hard and not worry about, you know, if I get called up, if, you know, whatever, just letting things kind of happen. Um, like I said, you put the work in, good things usually come up. Mm-hmm. So I think this year, the biggest thing for me was dropping into that mental state and trying to flow every game. And I think that that helped me improve, man. And when you say meditation, are you talking about your at your house meditating, thinking about the game? Or is this something before games? Is this something during timeouts or halftime? Yeah, so I meditate every night. I mean, that's just something I do. Um, I mean, and before every game, I try to, I put my headphones in, lock in, um, just try to really get into that moment, not think about outside distractions, this or that. And I try to really just focus on, you know, my breathing and just letting the game come to me. Uh, yeah. That was the hard thing for me is letting the game come to me. I like to, I use, I used to like to force, you know, if things aren't going, try to force it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just try to let the game come to me now. And usually that's the best way to approach the game for me. Everybody's different, like I said, but I like the game to come to me and flow from that. Yep. And when you talk about meditation, I think so many athletes, they understand the benefits, but they get into it and it's really hard. Tough. Like they, people don't understand meditation is just like any other skill. Like the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. Right. So when you start, there's not going to be any direct benefits your first week because you don't know how to visualize at a level that's realistic enough. Mm-hmm. But eventually, like I've heard, uh, sports psychologists talk about you turn up the knob. So you got like a, a color knob. So you turn up that color knob and things get more vivid. There's a sound knob. You turn up that sound knob and, and, and you're visualizing the sounds, the colors, the facial expressions, right? One thing that helped me was I was talking, um, or I, you, you kind of think about the facial expressions of like your coaches when you're going off. You think about afterwards when your parents are coming to give you a hug, like you're thinking about all of these like facial expressions and you truly become in that moment, right? And so the more vivid you get everything, the more it's going to actually translate, but getting it that vivid is a skill in itself. And so people like you who are like actually meditating every night, you're literally getting better every single night. It's no different than like working on your shooting. No, hundred percent. Like the brain's a muscle. I mean, like yeah. someone someone told me that. And like you got to train that muscle, just like you go to the weight room and train. So I mean, I took that to heart and really tried to up my mental game. Yeah, right. take us through that progression. Like, how'd you even get? Like, how'd you find meditation to begin with? Like, what was? Because I remember in 2017, you helped me out a lot. You know what I mean? I was going through a time, and you just get you offered me just even a book recommendation. Right. And then you know what I mean? From in terms of mentally, helped me a ton. So take us through What's that, that approach. book, first of all? Uh, it was five second rule. Yeah. Five mm-hmm. second rule. With yep. Mel, Mel Roberts. Yep. Yeah. Mel so, Roberts. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's just you know what I mean. Uh, with that book, it just tells you that anytime you see yourself going into that anxiety, right. you know, count back five, four, three, two, one. Get out of and, it. Yeah, exactly. And put yourself mm-hmm. back into that present moment. But that was in 2017. Yeah. So, but like Pete said, I mean, it takes a while to develop that. Like I'm still learning every day. Like mm-hmm. I'm not a master at yeah. my mind per se, but my mom introduced me to a sports psychologist when I came back from Italy. 
I mean, like I said, I was like struggling, not playing my game, worrying too much, thinking too much. Like I'm a thinker and analyzer as it is. Mm. Like my fiance tells me all the time, like you analyze everything. Right. So I had to step back. My mom, once she brought up, uh, I think you should see a sports psychologist. My first response was like, I'm fine. Dude. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm not crazy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm good. I don't need a sports psychologist. Like whatever. I ended up going, um, cool dude in Hermosa beach, forgot his name. I went to about three or four, four sessions and he introduced me to meditating and kind of like how the mind will just get fixated on one thing and it'll take you down a dark path if you let it, man. So right. it was trying to get out of that cycle of the downward spiral and, you know, stepping back and realizing that it's just a thought, man. Like if you think about your thoughts, you can't really see them or touch them or anything. Mm -hmm. Right. Like where do they come from? Yeah. Like think about that. Right. So that got me into that, man. And uh, I've been practicing meditation for about two years now and you know you start to see benefits of course I'm human you're, you're gonna go into those times where you think too much or analyze too much for but sure. it's easier for me to come back to center and that's huge let things happen that's huge yeah I think a lot of people get frustrated because they think that they should get their mind to a point where your mind never wonders you're awesome. gonna wonder it's just how fast can you realize that and then get back to that neutral yeah but like people just get frustrated and they're just like, oh, I have no control over your mind. I'd say 99% of people just, they're in that boat of like, I just don't have control over my thoughts. 100%. Yeah. Or the, the actions around them, which then compel their thoughts to feel helpless in terms of not having control of anything. Right, right man. Yeah. So let's talk about like that, that 58 point game, you know, you're telling us earlier that your teammates said you look possessed. Yeah. Like <laughs> where are you at mentally in that time? Um, so my boy, uh, Dusty Hannes, he was on my teammate last year. He actually got called up to the Grizz um, last year. He was like, dude, you just look like you were kind of possessed out there. Like, <laughs> I didn't want to talk to you or look at you. Um, but honestly, like, you know how basketball players talk about flow? Yeah. And, and it's just kind of like a, a weird sensation. Like everything is just going to go right. Mm -hmm. You can't really think. If you think about it, like you're out of it. Yes. Um, so honestly, man, I just, I hit a different flow. I told him before the game, I was like, man, I love these rims. Like I told him that I'm like, <laughs> these rims are nice, bro. And he's like, yeah, like good shooters rims. And bro, I just dropped in the flow and, and I look up and I saw 58. I'm like, my goodness. Like, I, I don't even know how that happened. It was one of those things where I wasn't thinking about scoring. Like I was trying yeah. to win the game. It was just one of those moments you just dry dropped into that flow state. Yeah, yeah. And that's so valuable. Like where your mind is at, like if you went in that game saying, I want to score 58, it won't happen. You don't have that same flow. But when you have that external focus of, I'm just trying to win, a yeah. lot of times that you can really find that zone. And if you've never felt that flow zone, like you're missing out on one of life's best yeah. moments. Like 100%. that is the best feeling you can like ever drug, have. Bro. Yeah. yeah. You've been there before too. You had that, you had an infamous game your first year in the G league, right? When it was that similar situation to your college game where you got checked yes, into the game bro. late down big. And then you just found yeah, that flow right. and went off. Yeah, bro. We were down like 27 in the fourth quarter. I hit like nine threes. Yeah. In like the four quarter. and a half minutes. Or yeah, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, like I dropped into flow without even knowing what flow was. Yeah. At the time. <laughs> right. Like I look back now, I was like, I like, I like to study the mind. It's like, okay, like, that was, I was dropping, I was in flow. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. For, I mean, for me, I just know that nothing else matters. Like, right. you know, there's those times where you're playing and you're thinking about someone in the crowd, like, oh, so-and-so is in the yeah. crowd watching me. I want to do well for them. This scout is here. I want to do well for them. When you're in the flow, it's like, I don't even know if anybody's in the stands and you just see like, it's like tunnel vision. Yeah. What I love about everything that you said about that so far though, is that not once have you been like, oh, I'm going to be focused on making shots or my offensive game. Everything that you said is I'm just focused on how do I help my team win? Yeah. And then it, you, man. you being the player that you are, found the flow because that was the best way that you could help your team win. I think was, that's it, man. Like when you're not worried about yourself individually and you're worrying about doing the things you can to help your team win, I think guys get caught up in the numbers and the analytics and this or that. Like those take care of itself at the end of the day. I mean, you can't go out there and say, oh, I'm going to score this tonight. Like, no, like you're already putting a cap on yourself then. Yeah, you go, oh, I'm going right. to go average 20. So then when you get 20, are you done? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Don't put yeah. that mental cap on yourself. So For I go sure. in not knowing what the heck is going to happen. I could have the worst game of my life, but I'm already on to the next thing. So I right. don't even know. That's huge. And so talking about, okay, how do we get into that flow? I think one thing that we've talked about before, and actually I've asked you this question before. I think it, I was, it was one of the summers. So every time Tyler comes back, I tell him that I changed my shot and I don't miss. <laughs> I just want to like put that in his brain so that when we play ones, he, he guards me and I can blow by him. But, uh, you know, I, I'm somebody who always changed my shots. Like ever since my hand injury, I'm always trying to change things. And so I'm, I'm always telling Tyler like, Hey, like, this is what I did to my shot. This is what I did to my shot. And so 
Uh, I'm a very internal focused shooter where I know exactly what's going on with me. And I like to pick the brains of great shooters. So I remember I asked Tyler, I was like, what do you do with your, or no, I was like, what do you look at on the rim? And you're like, I don't really know. I just shoot. Someone just asked me that uh, like a couple of weeks ago. They're like, what do you, what do you look at when you shoot the front or the back of the rim? I don't look at either. That's the, <laughs> that's the best answer. Yeah. It's just like, I don't know. Like I just shoot. I don't. Like if you're changing your form, fine, but we got to get it back to that external focus. And and if you're not going to find your flow yeah. when you're thinking internally, and then the other thing, you sit there and watch these club games, and somebody misses a shot short or whatever, and the parent goes, hold your follow through, keep your elbow up. Like that's the worst thing yeah, that you could do worst. because you're getting them away from that external focus and bringing everything back internal. 100%. Yeah, I think I think it also too is just the repetitions that you put up. I mean, you've put up so many repetitions that it's a subconscious level now. Like you right, can't yeah. consciously remember what you were focusing on at each shot. It's just that's what your rep range is taking you to. It's right. Like that subconscious I think like shooting. that's where my mind used to go. Like I'd be thinking about if I missed the overanalyzing, the thinking mind mm -hmm. I used to have. Like I'd be like, okay, what I do wrong? Yeah. yeah. And then that that's just never a good, especially when you're playing in a game. That is not the time to correct no, your shot. Not the time. I mean, you got to put reps in the gym. <laughs> Before you start trying to correct your shot in the game. That's yeah, just right. the worst time to do it. Right. And I think you understand, like, sometimes you miss a shot and nothing went wrong. Mm -hmm. I, if my form is good. I push it too hard. Like, right. that's going to happen. Yeah. And so to correct every time you miss a shot, man, that's you're going in the wrong direction. <laughs> it's over, man. Yeah. It's over. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. Uh, take us through how you ended up back in the G League. Because I know, you know what I mean, you spent a couple of years in Italy. Was it a com combination of, of just, you know what I mean, some of the – uh, lack of comforts overseas because uh, I imagine you know what I mean the money over there is, is is definitely something different. So, what what drew you back to coming over here and and, and getting back in the gym? Yeah. So I remember talking to my fiance in the summer. I'm like, I really I want to give it another shot. I want to give this thing another chance. Like, yeah, you make more money overseas, but I'm like, when I'm 30, I want to say, okay, you know what? I gave my chance. I gave another chance to go back and and try to make it to the NBA. So. I remember that summer, man. I'm a spiritual guy, so I, was, I just felt like God was telling me, like, look, man, give it one more chance and see mm -hmm. and see where it goes. Um, so I ended up deciding to do that. Um, my agent was like, man, you bet on yourself. Like, I mean, this is a big, you know, you're, you're, you're taking a significant hit, you know, financially. Yeah. You don't make a ton in the G League. I mean, that's open knowledge. I mean, yeah. you're not going to the G League thinking you're going to play there forever. Mm -hmm. um, so I decided to do that, man. And what's crazy is I, I didn't play my first. I mean, I played, but like, 12 minutes my first 10 games or whatever so i'm just thinking to myself like oh man did i make the right decision or yeah. you know and then you know guys got hurt and guy got called up and it was my opportunity to play and i actually got moved to the point guard position uh, which i haven't played since college mm. um but i was always comfortable handling the ball like i consider myself a playmaker not only a scorer because um, i like to watch film and dissect the game and i like i like figuring out different things so and, and making plays for other people so i got moved to that point guard position and that's like, my, I, I like playing point guard now, man. Yeah. For you, like as a point guard, does that help you get into your shooting zone? Like I know for me, part of it is because I was strictly a point guard. I never learned anything else. But like if I'm running the two guard spot, I can't find my zone. But when I get to bring it up and right. get between the legs yeah. a few times, you get to kind of feeling your swag a little bit and just you feel the ball. So like for me, I shoot way better when I get to bring the ball up instead of actually like play the two guard spot. Yeah, I think honestly, a lot of guys are different. Um, I'm just talking for me personally, I'm a rhythm player. Yeah. So I like, if I have the ball in my hand, I feel like I can make the right play, the right read. Um, and that's just how I get my rhythm. I mean, mm -hmm. like I heard you guys talking about Clay Thompson the other day. The dude takes three dribbles a game and has 65. Like yeah, that's, true. that's, right. that's bonkers, man. Like how right. do you do that? But some, everybody's different. Um, you got to find what works for you and find like your little niche mm -hmm. and how you, how you're going to perform at your best. Right. Okay. So let's switch gears. I always like to, to ask people, is there, has there ever been a time where you've been on the court with somebody and you just like felt like you couldn't belong? Like you got absolutely torn up when we played once other than playing me, oh, obviously that probably, that everybody has that feeling. Oh man. Has I'm, there any, has there been anybody where you're like, yo, this is insane. Like I cannot hang with this guy. Honestly, no. I mean, I feel like in order for you to play your best, you got to have that inner confidence mm -hmm. that you're the best player out there. I mean, not not anything cocky or anything, but just having that inner belief. I do remember one year we played Indiana. We actually beat them that year in my uh, junior year. Yogi was out mm -hmm. there. The dude blew by me like four times in a row. <laughs> That's and ironic. I'm like, we were I'm like, yeah, we were just talking about him. I'm yeah. like, this guy is the one of the most explosive guards I've ever had to play against. I mean, 
I'm like, okay, I need to step up my game, like, laterally, defensively. Yeah. Like, he made me better without even knowing it. Right. Like, his, he was so explosive. I mean, he still is playing for the Kings now, yeah. whatever. But I remember after that game, I'm like, my good. Even though we won, I'm like, this guy was destroying me the last 10 minutes of the game. Right. I mean, yeah, I was going back and forth with him, but I felt like he could he could have went by me anytime he wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's 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 the mental shift that most people don't quite have is like when they have those games where they get blown by, it's like, oh, I don't hang at this exactly. level. For you, it's just like it points you in the right direction for your training. Yeah. Bro. You're like, hey, I got to reach out to this guy who can get my lateral speed up. That's where I'm going with it. Log me into PJF. Log me <laughs> into that PJF system. <laughs> and it's You're right. 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 So like that's huge right there because I don't think, I think people take for granted like, how special that is to yeah. be like, oh yeah, he blew by it's me. It's constructively but... criticizing yourself. Yeah. Right. yeah. I don't I mean, look whereas at that most people just shut down. Yeah. Right? right, bro. You can't do that. I feel like you got to take every situation to learn. Yeah. Like, if I go one for 12 in a game, like I use that as a learning situation, right? Mm -hmm. It's not going to be perfect any game. You're not going to go out there and play perfect. If you think you're going to do that, you're done. You're yeah. done. Yeah. You're done, bro. Basketball is too imperfect of a game yeah. to 100%. be a perfectionist like that. Yeah, I mean, I've, I had that moment in... When we played one. <laughs> <laughs> Took you to Actually, a whole no, Okay, level. okay. Uh, last summer, I had that feeling with you a little bit because you shoot well, and so I'm fast, and I'm getting on you, but you were more shifty last year. Yeah. And this guy has a weird game. Like, he's it got is, some man. weird, like, back-to-basket, yeah. hezzy, herky, herky, jerky, like... Even you, you have a, a weird release point for being a little shorter. Yeah, like, lefty. Shoot low. Yeah, it's... He was cooking us last summer, and I was like, "Yo, I can't guard this guy." So I've been like, "I've that's been in big, the last." That's a big statement for, for Paul. me to admit it. Yeah, yeah, that's a big statement. Like, so I I had that moment, um, but also so like a lot of when we battle, like Shabazz is there. Oh, Baz is impossible to guard, bro. He's <laughs> so fast. But like, I feel like in our gym, I do a good job. I went to Portland, right, and I'm staying at his house. We stay. I stay there for like ten days. Every single day we went to the practice facility and played two on two. It was me and his friend from overseas, and it was him and one of his Yukon, his former Yukon teammates. Yeah. And I had to guard him every day for 10 days straight, and this dude cooked me. Like he was on a, like a whole nother level. He's hitting like step back threes from the circle. I would get on him, he would blow by me. And like we would go home and play cards, and he would beat me at cards. We would play two K, and he'd beat me at two K. Bass 2K. is a winner, bro. Yeah, bro, he's, he's a winner. He's, yeah. he's like he's mentally different. Oh, I went yeah. I went home from that ten day trip like so defeated. <laughs> I was like my confidence at an all time low. Honestly, though, Baz like playing with him helped me as well. Like he picks his spot so well. Like yeah. he has a different combination. If you cut him off here, he's already gone. True. And, it, and defensively, he's like a pest. Defensively, he's yeah. annoying because you'll blow by him and you think you're good and then you'll get the ball to a pocket and his hand will already right be there. there. Like bro. he knew where you were going to be before you knew. Right. You can't play around with Baz. So annoying. No. no yeah. to, I just remember playing, we went one-on-one -on -one from the block and I'm like, all right, Baz, he's six foot, maybe a buck 65. I'm like on the block and then... I tried to do a drop step. So, you know, the thing smack. with Paul, when you're playing with Paul ones, and there's, there's like five people there, he'll try to find the buffer <laughs> in the group. And he'll try to sneak behind them knowing that he's going to get the stop no and play chance. offense. So I'm just letting you know now. No you ever chance. get a chance to play, right. don't right. be the buffer. <laughs> so we described our moment of not being able to hang with somebody on the court. Skyler actually had that moment today Damn. playing oh, me in one-on-one. -on -one. I just want to hear the truth. What happened today? The truth was, I, I introed it pretty well. I was my pregame routine was sitting on the couch eating Oreos, watching Game of Thrones last night. He Our was Oreos vegan. Oreos are <laughs> vegan. Oreos not vegan. not an ethical vegan uh, uh, option, but still vegan gotcha. nonetheless. Uh, but you know what I mean. And then there's a post up of Paul last night. It was like 9 p.m. He's on the shooting gun. You know what I mean. Yeah. Back in the T no days Eastern Rams. Washington. No days days days. Yeah, he was taking the T Harv Eastern Washington approach. So I stepped in and we talked about it. You know what I mean. Having that inner belief, that self confidence, yeah. is the only way you can approach a game. Uh, so that's how I approached it today with Paul, and uh, and like Paul had mentioned earlier, he's probably in his prime right now. So I'm yeah, I'm in my prime right now. Yeah, it was it was it was but, a humbling but, opportunity. But the thing is, I walked into the gym and I'm just trying to get to work, and Skyler goes, "I think I'm ready for the ones." <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't challenge hey, him. He brought it to you. Yeah, but, he brought it to me. But, oh, that's a problem, guy. What, uh, <laughs> And See, I was like, all right, grab your shoes. I, I think he didn't we, expect me to like actually. Okay, so whatever podcast it was we've released at this point, we talked about that on the podcast. You know what I mean? Our advice, I think it was last episode, was you got to go out there and you got to find somebody that you know That's has true. a little bit of yeah. strength advantage. Yeah. I know Paul's going to beat me with the first step, the lateral quickness. 
he improved his shooting, and that was that was what I I thought I was gonna be able to outshoot him, bro. Normally I can outshoot him. <laughs> I was, Normally I can outshoot him, but I, I was didn't. hitting split stance shots from the circle today. Yeah. Was I not? He was again. The confidence was on another level. It was in the 80, 90 Were you in clip. flow? I was in the flow. Oh, today Scott. was my flow zone. Yeah, yeah it was, he was in the bad, flow. Bro. He was in the flow. But I, was again, bad. if we look back all the way into the meditative stuff we talked about today, I was actually doing that. I'm like, okay, Calvin's filming. Paul's gonna put this on <laughs> Paul's gonna put the footage up over. so yeah so I was I was I was mentally out of my element <laughs> meanwhile, start thinking meanwhile about the gram, he started yeah thinking, meanwhile the you're, yeah you're, he's thinking about the caption yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> use after every shot your teammate is sitting there telling Paul like I don't want to talk to him right now because he was like he was uh, saying he was hitting split stand shots from the logo I'm I was like, possessed today. yeah it was bro. yeah it was That's funny it was but the funny thing is like I walked into the gym and he called me out yeah I'm ready and then afterwards after I cooked you now it's oh I was eating Oreos last night so oh, you weren't no, no, no. ready. Wait, wait, wait. I, Calvin, Calvin can attest to it. That at the very beginning, I definitely threw that on there in the footage on the B-roll. It was a B-roll. You weren't around. I couldn't let you know B-roll. that. B-roll. Yeah, B-roll. It was a B-roll. Edited it out, man. Yeah, Sorry. it was B-roll. Yeah, yeah, it was so. bad. So that's that's your experience of not being able to guard somebody was today. It was today. It was right. the first time in my life, though. It's all right, man. We so, all have our days. First we all have our days. It was a progress report. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was necessary. That's it was again, good. so I can, you know, do that. It was. He was my yogi pharaoh. I'm like, man, I gotta find. Gotta I get. Gotta, I gotta get on the the so Vertco to leave. Oreos, <laughs> right. And that's what I told him. Like he would make a shot and be like, oh, okay, Vertco D, and I yeah slide hand like you know, crazy. Hand you know? check. I don't hand check, bro. I'm just too fast. Too stable. Too stable. Too strong. That's my number one quote. Too no, fast, well, too strong, too stable. No, I'll think again, though. Yeah, so maybe we'll get a maybe we'll get a ones at the end of the summer. I know T Harv is uh, swerving the ones. I asked him about tomorrow. He said he couldn't do it. Whatever, you know. <laughs> I got no, yeah. fly it. I, we'll go. We'll go back to that. Uh, take us through. You know what I mean? You you your mental approach coming back from overseas had what you you say is your best year by far this year, and you were balling close to a call up, and then take us through that. Yeah, I mean, so you never really know if you're gonna get called up, but internally, you know, if you're having a you know a decent year or not. Um, so I come back from our all-star break and the first game back, man, I broke my foot. Um, so mentally, you know, that was a test, you know, my fiance was living with me at the time and I'm sure I wasn't the most pleasant to be hmm. around. I mean, it's hard to, you know, you're human at the end of the day and you know, you know, when you love something that much and it's taken away from you mm -hmm. and you know, it's going to be gone for two months. Um, it's hard to process that, but. You know, with her there and help me out, and then I, I'd still go to the gym and shoot on my boot and stuff like that. And I worked out one of my guys up there, Tay Carter, would help me. Um, we just work on passing and stuff like that. But knowing you wouldn't be able to play those games was always tough. Yeah. But I just used it as an opportunity to, you know, mentally strengthen that a little bit more and um, right. lock into that part. That's huge. Yeah. So on that too, you what is that when you kind of had the the moment for the shirt? You know what I mean? Yeah, man. So. I thought about this, so I'm all about the moment. People ask me like during the year, like, oh man, like you're playing well, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, man, honestly, I'm just living in the moment. So I made this shirt with the location pin drop on it, like you're going somewhere, but after it reads the moment. Um, so it means like your location is always in the moment. I mean, you're not worried about the past. You're not thinking about the future, right? Cause you can't control those things. You're just mm -hmm. living in the moment, planning for the future. Um, so that's at the end huge. of the day, that's, that's, that's like what I try to go, that's what I go with now. Like people ask me like, what, how you doing? Like, what's next? I'm just in the moment, man. Just trying to work for Facts. this day. That's so yeah. big. That's huge. And so you actually have those shirts now. Yeah, man. I got to buy one of those. Yeah, no, I'll get you one for sure. Yeah. It's on my IG. I'm going to send one that's your way, such, man. Yeah, that's such a dope concept. For sure. Um, all right, let's go quick speed round. So I'm just going to, I'm going to fire off questions um, and just answer them quick. You don't, you can't even think, bro. You can't even think about them. You just got to answer. Oh, them. man. Who are the top five players in the NBA right now? Fast. KD, Braun, Steph. Dame Dalla. Oh my gosh! Mm. Did you just drop that on and us? And I'm gonna go. Ooh, I'm missing one. I already, I already know. You're I'm missing, missing two or three. James. James. Whoa, so you missed that? Jonas. 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 I'm gonna go Kawhi. six. And you can't Kawhi. go. No, okay. God, bro. There's so you many. You have to yeah. take out That's Dame. Tough. You have to. Big I would Scott, love to put Big Dame. Sky native, man. Oh, I gotta okay. put Dame. Okay, come on. You're in a U too, baby. I know, but I I'm not that loyal, bro. Okay. Yeah, because you can't take Kawhi out. Yeah, Especially he, after what he did. And Jonas, oh, yeah. bro. I can't honestly can't, yeah. I can't even give you a top five. It's it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Top seven is easy. Top, top five seven. is really yeah. tough. We talked about that the other day. Um who is the best defensive player in the NBA right now? Mm, Kawhi. Kawhi. Who's the best offensive player in the NBA? Durant. Durant. Hundred percent, bro. Seven feet. Over James. James is nice. Best shooter not named Curry. Ooh, Clay, James. Clay mm -hmm. and James. Yeah. James is a different game, bro. James is like 
I'm going to body you, body you can't stand in front of me. Like, they had to switch up defenses to play. They were playing <laughs> behind D, my that's man. That's what I'm saying. Like, my man has just ruined the game for yeah. real. Like, you can't guard him. No. Impossible. I've never seen somebody, like, require a completely different defense. Me either. Like, I can't even. I don't. James is in his own category. Right. As just It's unstoppable. Just, just different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just I'm different. different. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's hard to compare him. Because I always think about, like, have you ever had, I'm sure you've had this a million times, but like high school or whatever, you, they're, you're the one score and they go like box and one. Yeah. And there's a guy just denying you the whole game. That's like James every, every day. Every game, bro. They're triple team and double team everything. And he still gets the ball. Like in those games, I'm like, hey, yo, use me as a decoy. You guys go. <laughs> yeah. For him, he's like working just to get the ball and then he breaks people down. It's, in, it's I was insane. just talking so like his mental preparation to the game has to be just sick. Like, you know, every single night right. for 82 games, 81 right. games, you're getting just pestered like that is unbelievable it's unbelievable you know how exhausting that is to get pestered that night in night out like that best rapper alive right now you can answer that for me drake of course 100 (laughs) percent. it's all this guy listens to in workouts who's the best rapper alive right now for me yeah j cole yeah yeah, j cole come on i'm probably still with j cole um i've been with him for so long he just doesn't produce as much as i would like so it's easy to fall off because he's just not feeding you that music yeah. every He's day. in his own niche. Jake right Cole's now. tough. Yeah, yeah, he's in his own niche. Right he's now. still, yeah. He's underrated is, is definitely Logic. Super underrated. I'm a, oh, Logic? Logic yeah. Logic That's underrated. Oh, yeah. I'm he's just... got a whole cult following. Oh, like, yeah. I don't know if he's that underrated anymore. That's true. I just mean in this conversation. No, in this conversation, you know what I mean? You would never hear his name thrown out as best rappers alive right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I said underrated. That's a good point. All right. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Let's see. Um, if you could go to any college, where would you go other than Eastern Washington? I wanted to go to Arizona. Hey, hey. bear down. Let's I go, did, man. I wanted to go there yeah. so bad. I remember going to games there as a kid, and like I just loved it. That's funny because huh. you know when you first walked in the gym and you first shot a jump shot, I was like Salim Stoudemire. You, like, you got that the same does look like Salim Stoudemire. Like, the, the twist, like I was like, oh Bro. my gosh, she like I was like, wow. Yeah, those I amazing. feel like I've wanted to say that my whole life, and I didn't know how to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Salim Stoudemire. That's yeah. That's. That's exactly that like right lefty now. little weird thing. <laughs> yeah. that you when you, got going. When you impersonate my shot, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, the best impersonation. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, who wins the finals? Mm. I think the Warriors are going to take it, man. Mm. I think it's going to be Warriors Bucks. They're too good. Warriors Bucks. I think so. The funny thing know. is, their offense actually runs smoother without KD. Like yeah. I think they're better with KD, but their offense really runs smooth without him. So yeah, I don't even think a, they'll take a, a step point. back. Like Steph and them. Yeah, like they just go off without him. Bro. Yeah, I was saying that. I, I said that earlier today that Clay probably went up to KD and was just like, "Yo, I'm trying to get my money this summer. Can you take a few games <laughs> off in the playoffs so we can remind everybody who bro, we're at?" Yeah. Steph had zero at half. I know you're. I know. Probably, oh, I knew I was, was so excited. Yeah. You, hey, you were stoked, on. I was stoked. Was I was sick when we lost. Did you lose Especially your with mind? how we lost because we really played good D. Yeah. And like they just hit tough shots. I like how you say we. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's a fool. I love yeah. it. <laughs> I'm all in. I'm all in you on the Rockets. You know what's funny? Miguel right. sent me a pic of you just sick at the TV. Oh, yeah. He put that on his story. <laughs> oh, he did? Yeah. yeah. yeah I, was, I was so sick. Dude, yeah. I was tough. Oh, my gosh. I'm still depressed about it, but we'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll get over the hump. For sure. For sure. Um, Zion's the best prospect since who? Mm. Athletically or what? Just period. Total. Overall. Dude, I don't know. I've never seen a more athletic guy in my life, to yeah. be honest with you. Facts. Just the potential there for him is unbelievable. I mean, Braun, but my Lord, he probably does he jump higher than Braun? I is think he more so. athletic yeah. than Braun? I think so, especially because he does it off two feet a lot better than Braun. I think their one foot bounce is probably pretty similar, but Zion goes off one or two. Like, he's, he's, I think he's more athletic than Braun. Yeah. And he outweighs him by That's whatever scary, 30, bro. 40, 50 pounds. That is unbelievable. It's nuts. Does he get a shot in the league? Like, does, can he get a stroke down? Yeah, I, I, his shot is kind of weird. I don't think he'll ever be somebody that like really steps into threes or ever gets like a hezzy pull. Yeah. I think he'll be able to hit shots, catch and shoot. Yeah. And then he's so fast that like he'll just be able to catch, pump fake, and then just run through people. Yeah. yeah. I still think he's gonna be bodying people. He's gonna be bodying yeah. people. Like, he has already a man body. Well, and he's so agile in the le- uh, in the in the lane. So like he'll get in and he'll spin off you, and then he's like super coordinated around the rim. 100%. So when you're that strong, that coordinated, like you're That's gonna dominate. That's a problem. I do. Th- I think to get to like that superstar status, he's gonna have to learn how to step into a three. Right. But I think either way, as he is, I think he could be an all star. Yeah. What position you put him at though? Shoot anything. <laughs> Two through five. 
right, fair enough. Small ball five, just like you kind of like a yeah, dream on. Yeah. Yeah. It just depends on the team, I guess. Depends I, on the system. True. True. Um, okay. What is the number one skill? If you're a kid right now who's in eighth grade and you say, all I want to do is make the NBA, what is the number one skill that you have to have? Ooh, man. I think you really have to study the game. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of kids, you know, IG and stuff now and all the social media stuff. They People do a lot of extra stuff. Facts. I know when I look for my trainer, my trainer, JR, basketball trainer in um, Seattle, I told him, like, I don't want all the shenanigans. I don't mm-hmm. want, you know, a ton of cones, a ton of... I want... I know what my game is. I want to maximize my game. I don't need to be doing the crazy stuff, um, trying to right. go viral, doing drills. Right. Um, I mean, I heard you guys talk about that, the other podcasts as well. Like, So, I mean, I think you have to find somebody who's going to lead you in that direction you'd have to know your game know what you need to improve on but you don't need to you don't need to be great at everything per se Mm -hmm. but find what you're good at and maximize that like exactly right yeah that's that's what we've talked about that before like figure out what are your weaknesses and are those weaknesses debilitating weaknesses right so like if it's a debilitate debilitating weakness and it holds you back from being the best player then you got to attack it but a lot of people's weaknesses aren't necessarily holding them back from being dominant Right. Like if you're a point guard and coach tells you your weakness is posting up, do you really want to go all in on posting up or developing that mid range back to basket? Like that's nice. If you got the time to get around to that, let's do it. But I'd rather see you master, become a superhuman in ball handling and shooting right. and, and just just continue to maximize your strength. Because I think like especially at the NBA level, they're looking for specialists. Right. They're looking for somebody like he could fit this specific yeah. role. Right. Right. So you don't want to be just like pretty good at a bunch of different things like you. Your superpower is shooting. Right. And I think that's the number one superpower to have in today's league yeah. over anything else. It's just the ability to shoot the ball. Yeah. It's almost a necessary superpower. In right. And I remember it's getting more necessary. One thing I remember when I came to you, we worked a lot on balance. I didn't mm-hmm. know. I'm not I mean, you don't think about that kind of stuff. You really emphasize that. And I think that plays a big role in the NBA as well, and also professional basketball and kids in college. I mean, your balance, your core, that has to be stable at right. at an elite level to play at an elite level. Yeah, I facts. mean, you've opened my eyes to that, and I appreciate that because I didn't I didn't think of it as that important. Right. I want to know how much, you know, shooting is your superpower. How much better of a shooter did you go from high school to college, college to pro? Like what? Oh, man. So high school and college, what really helped me was a shooting gun. We yeah. had one, and I literally would – like always be in the gym shooting. I mean, I had nothing else to do. School work, obviously we had, I mean, I wasn't playing games, so that was my games. I'd shoot on the gun. Yeah. And then college to pro, man, you gotta get, adjust to the line. I mean, the line is pretty far back when you go from college to the NBA. I had to get used to that, but for me, my, my mechanic hasn't changed. I mean, I think a lot of shooters change their mechanics because um, you know they're missing or this or that. I trust my mechanics. Yeah. My dad would always tell me that. He'd be like, trust your mechanics. You might have games where you're just shooting terrible, but if you trust it and um, you rep it out enough, you know you know what you can do. So, yeah. So if you right. look at a clip of you shooting sophomore year of high school, even what were you then like five five? You're still yeah. So the I same used to now? no. I used to shoot below. Like I used to shoot super low. Yeah. I had to change my shot uh, my junior year. But since then, I mean, of course, you get stronger yeah. as you get older, so the shot looks a little different. But I haven't changed my shot significantly. No. Mm-hmm. No. What, next, as as shooting is your superpower, what do you think is the most important aspect of shooting? And in terms of form, like what, you know, oh, see, man, I, I don't like because I think everybody shoots differently. Exactly. Yeah. So like if a kid or somebody comes up to me and asks me like, oh, what do I need to do different? I'll, I'll you know, I'll look at them and see what they do. But honestly, I think just consistently repping out your form mm-hmm. and it comes to a point where you don't even think about shooting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you have those thoughts when you're shooting, then it, it's not the way to go. I mean, I've gotten to the point now where I know my shot. I mean, I trust my shot. I, you're going to have days, like I said, when you make or miss, but I think consistently practicing that same form rep after rep. And it gets boring. It's tedious, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you're just like, I'm tired and I don't want to follow through or this or that. Yeah. But balance for me is key. Like like I said, like that was a big, that's helped me in my shot too, balancing, because you don't know, you're shooting in different positions throughout a game. You can't you can't choose how you're going to shoot. True. Just yeah. balancing, squaring up, and, and just confidence at the end of the day. I kind of right. want to build off that, too, because when I'm working with shooters sometimes, especially good shooters, I see that in, in, in the course of a workout where they almost get bored making shots. Right. Bored with that repetitive form right. after form after form. So they start changing things just because they get they want to see something different. Like, how did you make sure you didn't do that? So I try to make a game out of it. I'll go, okay, I can't move to the next right. spot, so mm-hmm. I hit 10 in a row. So mm-hmm. that that right there will lock me in yeah. to – 
okay, I need to accomplish this before I can move on. And you look at it and you, it might take you 60 shots, who knows, but yeah. every single shot you're trying to make that shot because you know, yep. that's just mentally though. Are you going to cheat it and say, okay, that's good enough? Or you, you got to make, you got to make it fun, man. Cause yeah. at the end of the day, you got to have fun with it and think of different ways to make it unique because the mind, like I said, wants to get onto the next thing quick and it, it you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be fun with it. For sure. I like that. Now that it opened my eyes, like, uh, cause in the last couple of years of Kobe's career, he would come into our gym and he would work out and I would just sit there from our weight room. He would work out on that court right in front of the weight room yeah. and I would just watch him. And like, I've never been so bored watching a workout. <laughs> right. <laughs> like usually you watch and you're like, oh, they're doing different stuff. They're doing these moves, bro. He was standing under the hoop and he would spin it out, catch on a jump stop, reverse <laughs> pivot, knock it off the glass. And he did this for hours. He right. didn't switch up anything. And then one day he came with like, he was with like uh, T Mac, like a bunch of different guys. I think yeah. Nick Young was there, like a bunch of guys, and they all thought that they were gonna get like the secret, like the Kobe <laughs> secret. And his secret was he lined them up in this line, and then same thing, he spun it out, reverse pivot, fade away. Right. And like they just did this for hours, and you could tell like by watching them that they're like, like what is this? Right. I thought there was gonna be some sort of special drill, yeah. but like that is the special drill. It's patience. It's right. just like, I can sit here and do this for longer than you can. I'm mentally that tough. 100%, bro. You can learn a lot from that. I mean, like, I don't know everything as a shooter. I'm still trying to learn stuff every day about, like, okay, what does this guy do? How does he do that? There's just so much to pick up on, man. But like you said, Kobe made it boring, but the dude right. was killing. <laughs> right. No, but and, and then talking, like, specifics on the shooting, like, it's so valuable, you know, how you talk about you're just in that zone. You're not thinking about anything going on. I like that you appreciate the fact that everybody's different. Like in the strength and conditioning environment, we know two people aren't going to squat the same. You got different hip width. You got mm -hmm. different structures. You got different femur lengths. We would never say you have to squat like that. Yeah. But then on the core, all of a sudden we're saying you got to shoot like this. You got to shoot like Steph or Ray Allen. You have a very different body. You have different experiences. You're not going to be, you're not going to move the same way that they move. So it's, it's, I think there are some pillars that you got to focus on. Like you're talking about balance. We got to follow through. Like there's certain things that 10 out of 10 great shooters are going to have and you want to copy those, but you got to just let yourself be you. And just like, like Tyler said, like just master that form. 100% bro. I mean, there's not one person that shoots the same in the league in my opinion. Yeah, Everybody yeah, has their own shot. For sure. And like Steph and Clay both have gorgeous shots, but they're very, very different, different yeah, shots. Very different. KD really different yeah. yeah kd shoots from the left side of his face right yeah. what do you think is like a good thing to eat for kids or high school kids or college kids my diet was terrible in high school or college like mm -hmm. what's a quick easy thing to make for a college or high school person um that's the problem is like the stuff that's good isn't necessarily quick right. and easy so like if i could go back i would learn how to cook earlier and i would learn how to meal prep because i didn't learn that until shoot age 23 Right. Like if, if I would just have got on YouTube one day and said, Hey, this is how you cook chicken, sweet potatoes and broccoli. Boom. Like I would have been a whole different person. Um, and then you, you like, once you learn how to cook that, it's just like meal prep. Like, I'm not just going to cook one meal at a time. I'm going to cook enough for the next three days, Right. chop it up, get it in your little Tupperware. Um, I think that's very doable for a high school kid. Right. It's just, people aren't actually doing that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you could prevent so many injuries. Like we touched on this uh, a few episodes ago about like how I broke so many bones. And then later I started to realize that it was a vitamin D deficiency. Really? So had I just gone in freshman year of high school, got a blood test and then had them tell me, this is what you're deficient in, lock it in. I may never have had those injuries. Right. My career may have, been, may have been on a whole different path. You might not be. You might be in the league right now. Bro, I might be in the league. <laughs> that's I might I was, still be in the league right now. That's what I was going <laughs> to ask you is, is when did uh, patella tendonitis start to become an issue with your playing and like the amount of volume of shots you could get up like yeah. comfortably and stuff like that? Honestly, I had it when I hit that growth spurt. Yeah, so, so I hit that. School. Yeah, I hit that 10 inch growth spurt and it kind of just stuck with me and nobody really like I went to you educated me on it. Would, you know, you have to build up other parts of your body. Mm -hmm. um, so I really didn't know. I thought I'd grow out of it. I thought, you know, it'd go away eventually, but it stuck with me for a while, man, until I really went to the root source of it. And Paul told me like, you know, we got to work your hips, your glutes, your this, your that. And that's when I brought my, open my eyes to that. I got to do other things to help me yeah. with that. Yep. That's like, if I could go back and really learn that at a young age, and then it's like every day before you get on the court, you have this warm up, extended warm up where oh, you're getting this yes. activation. 
you could extend your career so much. Yeah. And I think that's what we're seeing right now, too, is just the evolution of the game. That's why you see young guys come in and they're already just able to take over dominant. You know what I mean? Just because you see all this stuff is open information and readily available. So, like, to right. answer, if I was answering your question, you know what I mean, what age, it's like the sooner the better. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, the, if you're if you're 12 and you know what your dreams are and you want to take ownership of it, the Internet's there. Right. Yeah. Like, I saw a comment on one of your uh, Verco posts um, I wish I had you when I was a kid. Like, of course, me too. Like, it's, I, you, you can access like it now. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. the kids that are that are 12, 13, 14 that do have you and then do have, you know what I mean, that are listening to the podcast and like, oh, what? Nutrition? What's that? But like, even like, I see kids just go out there, throw off the backpack and start hooping. Like, no, just a yeah. little, like, you got to find time. I think that's what separates, you know, the great ones and people that are serious about it. Do they take time? Like, I'll stretch before every game, before we get to the mm-hmm. stretch. Like, mm-hmm. people think it's weird or whatever, but I have to, like, you have to activate yourself before you yeah. go on the court. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? You think you can just go out and hoop or you have to you get can, activated? You could do it and get away with it for X amount of time, but right. it'll catch up at some 100%. point. It's just a matter of when. And then people don't understand that, like, you could go out, You say you don't stretch, you just show up, you play a game. You might still feel good after that game, but the damage that you accumulated in that game could catch up years later. So it's like when you don't prepare your body like that, you're starting at a certain level. And then as you age, it's a decline. Whereas had I just started way higher by just doing simple things, activating, stretching. Now, as I age, it's a very gradual decline. Mm -hmm. And now I might still be able to play at a high level at 40 years old compared to the guys going down with bad knee injuries at, you know, 21, 22 years old. Yeah. You used to do that before you'd come in. I mean, you'd shut up to your sessions 20 minutes early right, every time. So you could get in that form rolling that you knew was necessary. You could get in that activation even before you started training because you knew it wasn't going to be built in with what he had you doing that day, but you still knew it was important for you. Right. I think that's value too is, you know what I mean? You've alluded to it. You're not the most athletic player. Yeah, you had to self-aware about exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> so you got to take every little advantage you can. I think there's value um, for the kids out there that are, you know, aren't walking in the gym, throwing down, you know, windmills oh, that are like, me. Yeah. Shout out to all my kids out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know what I mean? But you, you, you know, you're a testament to like, yeah, do all the little things necessary for you. Little things add up to big things. Exactly. Right. right. Exactly. hundred so. percent. Okay. Athletically in the G league, is it a step up from the overseas? hundred percent. Faster, longer. Yes. Everything. Okay. It's a completely different game. Skill, G- skill wise. I will say the guy, people overseas, like the overseas players, they're very skilled. Yeah, uh, I, I come back and look at us. We're more athletic, um, jump higher. We're going to run faster than you, jump higher than you. Um, mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, we might beat you. But overseas, they're more tactical with the game and pick the game apart. So right. I took that over here, picked the game apart, and learned little nuances of the game. And I think that's helped. Yeah. Shiftiness. Shiftiness. Here compared to there. Overseas, when you're sitting there guarding somebody with an overseas player, you feel like you're just locked in. Yeah, but you'd be surprised, man. They kind of like use their hands and different, like go grab your hand and pull them with you. Things they got like some that. Little tricks. Yeah, little tricks yeah. to trade over there, man. Um, they're sneaky. Yeah. The the reason I ask that is I've always noticed like we we train these overseas teams, overseas pros, and sometimes I'll hop in and play with them, and it's like they can't, they don't understand the shift. Like if you didn't grow up playing with American players, it's hard to guard American players because we have like a certain shiftiness yes. to us. Yes. You know what I mean? And then there's like little things like. Uh, I won't name the country, but there's teams from this one country that they come play and they don't understand spacing. Like I'll come downhill at them and they have to glue to me, even though I blow by them five times, like they have to stay on me. An American understands I'm going to give you a little space enough to where I can still contest. But like every team from this country, they couldn't understand that concept. So it's funny. There's like certain countries have certain tendencies. um, And it's cool to like see them play against American players and, and, how hard that transition is. Yeah, no, for sure. I think that's what, yeah, it's all building. You talk about that too, just your, your early reactions and like, you know, you build your mind for the game and, and what you see and what you understand, you know, at a young age. So whatever country that is, obviously they don't have anybody athletically enough that's going to go downhill and blow yeah. by them. They're like, ah, yeah. he's going to pull up. I'm going to choke up space and then boom. Right. Yeah, but, there's yeah. no one-on-one overseas. Like I will no. say my first show there, you try to get, like you said, in your bag a little bit, bro, that stuff's cut off. That'd be off. terrible over there. It's cut off. You, <laughs> it's all, you yeah. make more than three dribbles in some countries. Like you, what are you doing? You're dribbling too much. Yeah. Like get off the ball. I'd be like, done. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You'd be cooked. <laughs> That's interesting. What's the degree of difference in, in terms of talent just overall? Like Honestly, where you're... man, there's, I'm telling you, like people think that overseas is not, there's talented people over there, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. Them, even the Americans that go over there, talented as heck. Like yeah, you're, you're yeah, playing man. tough competition yeah, night sure. in and night out. Like it's no cakewalk yeah. at all. So what's the like the pool like? If you know, what I mean, G League and overseas in terms of just like, is it just 
merely timing of opportunity that guys are sitting at different places? Is that yeah, what you feel I like? Yeah, I feel like it's whatever stage in your career. Like, okay, do you want to go and make the most money you can or do you want to follow a dream? For me, as I, I still want to continue to follow my dream. Yeah. And so I think it's, it's up to the person, man. Everybody's right. different. For sure. 100%. All right, so that is some some very valuable content for a lot of these hoopers, a lot of these coaches, or anybody just trying to get to the next level in life. Like that story, Tyler's story is something uh, that can really inspire you. So, you know, for anybody who's listening in who wants to keep up with your career, what's the next move? So I'll be playing Summer League this year for the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, we're going to Utah first, that Summer League, and then we'll be in Vegas for, uh, for that Summer League. So nice. I'll be with the Grizzlies this summer. Okay. And then looking at next year, what are the uh, goals there? The goal is obviously the league, man. I mean, yeah. that's been my goal as a kid. But like I said, you can only control so much. So I'm For not sure. looking at it like that. I'm control what you can control. Control what you can like, control, it's, man. That's all you do. That's, that's it. all life is. That's it, man. Make the most out of it. Facts. Be sure to check out T Harv uh, on Instagram, T Raw with three A's. Uh, be sure to leave us a rating and review if you can. And of course, if you're trying to get to the next level, check out pjfperformance.net and check out our online programs. It's off season, that means it's gain season. Let's get it.